can see here, seam and freezing extenders contain, um, cooled seam and extenders typically contain just uh, milk and sugars and antibiotics and buffers. Frozen seam and extenders contain a number of other things. So in addition to those things, they also contain um, cryoprotectants. Um, and it could be something like glycerol or ethylene glycol or methylformamide or some combination of those things. And what makes these yellow is they don't just contain milk proteins, but they also contain egg yolk. So all frozen semen extenders, for the most part, contain some egg yolk. Egg yolk uh, can be very difficult to see the cells in. So if you look at an extender in, if you look at semen uh, diluted in this extender under a microscope, it may be very, very difficult to see the individual cells unless the egg yolk has been clarified. And all the extenders that we use and make here at SBS and, and distribute for all of our affiliates, they all use extenders that are produced here. Um, we have clarified the extender. So that despite the fact that one of these extenders may have as much as 20% egg yolk in it, you can still see all the individual cells and you can see uh, that they can be analyzed on a CASA system. If it's not clarified, you cannot analyze it on a CASA system. You can only use subjective motility uh, because all of the particles in the egg yolk, the lipids and, and proteins that are in the egg yolk, um, cause a problem with the CASA. They identify a lot of that stuff as dead cells. But when it's clarified and through the process that we go through here, using high-speed ultracentrifugation of the extender itself to remove all the non-solubilized um, particles in the extender and then a filtration process makes it clear for our uh, ability to to analyze the motility problem. How many uh, different extenders uh, on average do you use? Uh, when we have a new stallion that gets presented to us for freezing, we do we go through a procedure called a test freeze. So every new stallion comes in, we collect him, to deplete his, his stored up sperm reserve. So it's usually three to five daily collections. During that time, we're gonna analyze his total sperm production, his uh, sperm quality in terms of motility and morphology. And then uh, we're gonna look for stabilization of sperm numbers and stabilization of sperm quality. Once we know that we have reached that point where his sperm numbers are stable and we are collecting the sperm that have been produced in the last 24 to 48 hours, and we will give a day or two sexual rest, collect again, and then split that ejaculate into fractions and freeze with a multiple of extenders. So we have at SBS, we produce about six different extenders uh, for freezing that each have their own specific protocol, and they vary depending on the components of the extender. It could be different cryoprotectants, could be different percentages of egg yolks, different buffers, different additives in those extenders that make them a little different from one to the next. And what we have found uh, is that there is definitely a preference a stallion preference for certain types of extenders. There is no one extender anywhere in the world that is the best extender for all stallions. So we go through this process with every new stallion to determine which protocol is the best to freeze the sperm from that individual stallion. And once we selected that based on post loss semen quality, that's the procedure we use to produce doses for that horse going forward. Does that tend to change from year to year for stallions? Like, do you need to retest extenders with a stallion? It, it, only if we have a new process that's developed or a new extender that's developed do we typically, but typically stallion's preference stays the same over time. We're always looking to get the best quality semen from each individual stallion. Some stallions freeze equally well in most all of the procedures. Some stallions don't freeze in any of the procedures and some stallions freeze remarkably better in one versus another. 